Got a Photoshop question? Brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. It's Ask Dave. Last time I showed one method to have more than one filter different directions on the same photograph. And part of the reason I had to do it the way I did was because of the way smart objects and smart filters work. And it happened around the same time I had another question from Don Berman who said, can you have more than one smart filter and mask on the same smart object? And the answer to that question is no, but let me show you an example of how you might be able to do it. So this is a camera raw smart object, so I've already made some adjustments to it. Now her skin is beautiful, it doesn't really need any help at all, but I'm going to show a technique that, not to suggest that I would actually do this on this photograph, but once again just to kind of show this, the theory of having a couple of smart filters and masks. So there's a couple of different possibilities here. First of all, let's do a blur. Now I'm not in any way suggesting that you would want to blur, use this method to affect someone and retouch a photograph. I'm simply doing this because it'll be a really obvious way to see what's going on. So I've blurred too much. So please don't ever use this as a retouching method, but again, this will just help me show what we're talking about here. I'm gonna double click and lower the opacity a little bit to soften it a little bit, so it's not quite so obvious. But the problem is it softened everything, including her eyes and her hair and so on. So same kind of theory here. I can fill the mask for the smart filter with black. Command or Control I will invert it and then take my paintbrush, let's set it at 100% opacity, make sure I got white as my foreground color, and now wherever I paint with white, I'll be basically telling it, okay, blur these areas. So what I would generally do, again, not as a skin retouching method, but for the purpose of our demonstration, is go in and adjust or paint with white on all the skin areas that I can see, trying to avoid detail area like hair and eyes and so on. And again, that's way too much, but this is just for the purpose of demonstration. Now, in this particular case, what I want to do is now sharpen other parts of the photograph. So another method that's possible, and this, as I mentioned last week, it gets a little more complicated, but I think in some ways it's, it's for an ongoing project like this, it's actually pretty a pretty good technique because of the flexibility it gives you. And so I have this camera raw smart object, which I could again go back, double click, go back to smart object if I wanted to. And it has a smart filter that I have masked. So the problem would be this. If I went and said, okay, now let's do an unsharp mask filter, the problem is it's gonna sharpen the same areas because because I can't paint on the mask and say, well, paint part for sharpening and part for blurring. It just doesn't happen that way. It's not going to help me at all. So what I would do though is this. I would view my layer mask and I'm going to select all and copy and then go back to my image. Now I'm going to convert this to a smart object. So that means I've got a smart object that built into it has both the camera smart object and the smart filter. Now let's do unsharp mask and again I'm gonna sharpen more than I normally would just so you can see that I'm clearly doing some sharpening to her hair and teeth and everything else and again I'm overdoing it please don't use these settings and now rather than have to go back in and paint everything one of the reasons that I copied the layer mask initially was to do this now I can option click on the mask itself paste and it's the wrong way around because I want to sharpen everything else except this so I just invert it. Now I've already got the mask done for me so as a result now I still have the soft skin with the one blur filter and then the sharpen part with this filter. So once again keep in mind don't use these numbers I'm just trying to make a point so here I could lower these numbers and say, okay, that looks a little better. But now if I want to edit the softening part, I just double click to edit the contents and then I can come back in here and say, okay, maybe I should lower this Gaussian blur significantly so it's a lot more subtle. Then as soon as I close and save that, it will update this one. 
So once again, it takes a little bit more effort, but unfortunately the way it works with smart filters is you can only have one mask for as many filters as you add, which some of the time is fine because you want multiple filters to have the same mask. But in a case like this where you want to have different masks, this is one of the approaches that you can take is to do the first filter and mask it, make that a smart object, and then do the second filter and mask that separately. Ask your short Photoshop question using the contact form here at Kelby TV or through Twitter at Dave Cross. Thanks for watching Ask Dave, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals and the Dave Cross Workshops. We'll see you next time.